Hi, Benedetta. Hi. Happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, running around like always. Yeah. yeah I'm fine. Where are you in these moments? I'm in Rome at the moment, but on my on my way out from Rome, uh, I'm getting to Amsterdam this evening. So oh. yeah, running around. Yeah. That's nice. So let's dive into our questions. The first one is: Please introduce yourself to the Eco Sprint leaders. So I'm Benedetta. I'm from Italy, and I'm, uh, I've started my experience uh, with the FYG in June when I got elected to the Executive Committee. And before that, I was uh, active in Italy, and I co-founded the Giovani Europeisti Verdi. Um, from that, Eduardo, he and me is yeah. a part of. Uh, that is it was a long angry. journey. Uh -huh. It was journey. a long journey, yeah. Yeah, long, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ago, still, more, still yeah. going. It's still very interesting and very exciting. Um, yeah. So we co-founded them in last year. It's something that the, the work started two years ago. And uh, I'm also in the executive committee of Jeff. And... Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's enough. Just to, to who doesn't know, Jeff stands for Giovanni Europeisti Verdi. And they are the young Greens of Italy. Yeah, and, sorry. Oh, yeah. Second question. Describe yourself in three to five words. Okay. Um, that's interesting. So I would say, uh, especially in this moment, I would say busy. I'm constantly busy. So whenever you ask me, how are you? I would say busy. Um, <laughs> and then I would say I'm a very enthusiastic, passionate person. So that's two words kind of like slash, so we could say yeah. one off. Um, and another thing that I am is probably disorganized. That's maybe why I'm always busy. <laughs> so I can manage <laughs> my time. <laughs> yeah, so I would say busy, enthusiastic, passionate, disorganized. Fair. Our third question is, what is your main focus for your mandate? So, I think that to answer my main focus, maybe if any of you was at the GA or so the minutes, everyone would know that my focus would be the Southern MOs, as I really stress that I want to develop, uh, um, I want to develop Southern MOs and the collaboration and Southern Europe and the Green Movement in Southern Europe. So I definitely say that is my main focus in the in, in the in the executive community for this mandate. Also, I'm from the south, so I think that was one, my motivation even to be a candidate in DC to give a bit of diversity. And uh, I am, I hope I can understand the main issues and challenges that the southern region of Europe has, and I would like to help all the EMOs um, and to support them to overcome these challenges and create a network together. Yeah, I understand. Our fourth question is, what is the role of the Green Movement in the place that you are from, so Italy? Okay. Um, well, uh, it's got a role, but it should have a much bigger one, in my opinion. But yeah, the role of the green movement. So first, I think we need to, to separate green movement and green politics. I think green movement has had a role like in many parts of Europe. I said a huge role and huge impact uh, in Italy. Uh, of course, I'm referring to the protest to probably Fridays for Future, another organization that having this huge mediatic uh, and uh, impact on this by, by being in the streets. Um, they have managed to change something in the Italian politics, but I would say just on paper. So what has happened is that there's a lot more interest and in saying of being uh, green in Italian politics, especially in the government, but, but the facts are not really proving that, but it's already a milestone, I think. So the green movement has had, and is having, and we saw even in Milan, has had a great impact even on politics and on elections. Uh, the fact that there was the pre-cop and all the protests and all the marches, that was really impactful. So it's having a great um, role in, in Italy. And then there is, that is also, so that's the second part is green politics. I think there's a lot of uh, space, a room for green politics to do a, to play a crucial role in Italian, in 
in the Italian ecosystem. Uh, but right now, we're still quite small, like I think in many parts, especially Southern Eastern Europe. But what we saw with the election right now is that there's a change, there's something that is happening, probably, especially in some parts of Europe. And that is definitely thanks, not just to green movements, but a lot maybe should be given to them. Um, so I think the green politics right now has a, a, a has a commitment, not a commitment, but as a role, as a, a duty to mm -hmm. kind of gather these, uh, these movements, these, these what people are shouting in the streets and all these young people to gather all these and to, to bring them into politics and to be a strong, very strong political movement to manage to take these into the institution. So there is a role that has been played now by, by now by politics, but there's so much more that must be done. And it's a duty for us that are in politics to do it. So in my understanding to be as a bridge that connects the institution to the movements, the green movements. Yeah, exactly. So that is what I mean. But I think right now, the main thing that it must be done right now in Italy is to the green movement, the green political movement to be stronger, to manage to actually be this bridge. So to be more and more in the institutions, to be elected, to get elected people more and more in order to be able to be this to 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 function as this bridge and mm -hmm. so that is our duty to become to to become bigger and stronger i understand our following question concerns lgbtqi plus rights and it is how can we achieve stronger lgbtqi plus rights um, there's so much to say about this question. Uh, well, I will not, I'm not going to say it all uh, <laughs> because we will need an entire interview on that. I think what the main point, uh, in my opinion, that I would stress is education. Education, 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 especially in the reality of a southern country. I understand that there's a lot of disinformation, there's a lot of ignorance about uh, LGBTQI community. Um, and that is the basis of prejudice in most of the cases and that is the basis of hate and, and that is the basis of a lot of things of course you have cultural kind of inputs you have uh, um, say a cultural input but I think the cultural inputs can be fighted with uh, education educating young especially young people because in families, that's not, it's most likely this kind of education is not gonna happen in the family. If it's a very traditional family, traditional in bracket, in, yeah. in uh, <laughs> quote, quotation marks. Um, um, but I think the state through schools and other other bodies has the, has the duty again to, mm -hmm. to provide this kind of education because once you are educated on things, once you know things, it's a bit, of course, it's like it's, this is common. It's a common thread for any kind of issue. But I think for this specific issue, especially from the experience of a southern country, it's extremely important that there is a kind of a normalization of the speech. So I can talk about these things without thinking it's weird, without thinking it's mm -hmm. sexualized, without thinking I shouldn't talk about this because if I talk about this, I, I don't know, I can do something that is wrong. We need we need to first normalize the speech and the, the conversation and the discussion about the topic for, for young people, and then to educate these people in, in a very informed um, and specific way on the topics in order that to cut hate from the beginning. Yeah, so my understanding is to focus on education, to fight ignorance that leads to hate. Yeah, that's issues. right. In a very, in very, very easy words, yeah, that's definitely yeah. it. And the following question, the sixth one, is still concerns Eastern and Southern European animals, as we spoke before, but on a different angle. And the question is, how to increase the representation of the Eastern and Southern European animals in field? So, um, I think it's very, very well connected to what I was saying before, uh, and that is a bit what I will, will not try to do, of course, with um with the support of uh, all the C and the spokes and the, on the all FYG. 
the point is like to increase the representation in, you need to involve them more and you need to for some them more to be more engaged and to grow so if you want to have a representation yourself when to have people in the mos that are actually active in the mos so there's so many people active in the mos that one of them can be uh, and go in, can can go in FRG and work with FRG so to do that first the mos needs to be big enough like we i see even like in Italy, like our remote is fairly big to be so young. But of course, to have one person that is just a, a focus, for example, in FRG, that'd be a, a big problem because there's not many active people. And you really need to have um, many, many, like a basis of many, many active people to have someone that says, okay, right now I can leave my MO and just dedicate myself to FRG, to help FRG, to have a more diversity in FRG and everything. So the first, Think step of FIG is to support MOs to grow and to develop in order to have a basis and to give them training. And that's something that is already been done. And we, we're doing it a lot. And that's training that's starting uh, there's in October, November. There's a training about that. And it's gonna, there's going to be a, this different training sessions. How to develop your organization? How can, how can you do fundraising? How can you have a dialogue among members of, of the organization? How can you make it grow in, in, grow in terms of number? So that is the first thing. This kind of support is the first thing. And then the second thing is to feel involved and engaged, not just with FRG itself, because I think FRG is very good with that. Everyone, as he's saying, everyone has got like um, a word in FRG work uh, for GA and for all the other events that FRG does. But I think it's more like having this kind of European feelings and feeling that also these symbols are European and not just like at the, at the border of Europe. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I think you really need to strengthen the collaboration among them. So instead of having like a centralized organization and just thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going to rely to FYG and that is, and that is it. So I do not really feel connected to the thing, like most of MOs, Southern MOs, and I would say even Eastern MOs are not feeling connected to Europe as a, as a thing. Mm -hmm. I think if you strengthen the collaboration among these MOs within the, the, the region, first they will share same kind of, um, I wouldn't say value, but they will share the same kind of problems for sure, but also the same kind of cultural um, cultural uh, context. So mm -hmm. it would be much easier for them to to work with among each other. So that's something that we're really seeing in the South. Like we've done a couple of meetings and in Southern MOS members who were like, yeah, we really want to create a collaboration. We could work on that, on that, on that. That's a, that about Mr. VNC and that's that. So you have so many things that they can do together. And once you create a, a connection and network of these MOS, then it's kind of like natural for them to feel more European because of course, if I work with a Spanish, I'm not working with an Italian. So there's something that's a connection, an international connection. And that's why G being the, uh, the facilitator of all these can can also be more connected to the MOs. So they more can see the work of FYG and then they feel engaged, they feel supported. And then that this coupled with having a more a bigger activist basis can help them to be in FYG and make FYG more diverse. Sense. Now my following question will be around your mandate. So uh, it concerns Southern uh, European MOs. And we spoke about empowering and about, about the future, about enlarging the basis. So FIA having this role as facilitator. And my question is, how do you see in 10 years or in 20 years, the European MOs, how do you see the green movement in the Southern of Europe? Do you think that this wave will arrive as in the same way that, for example, arrived in, in Sweden, for instance, or in Northern MOs? Or do you feel like it will evolve in another way or it will not evolve, it will change? How do you think MOs and also the green parties of the South of Europe will be in 10 years? Wow. <laughs> if I had the answer to the question, I would be like a real politician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. joking just joking there um i cannot see what i cannot say what i think because i don't have an answer about that but i can say what i hope 
Sure. It's very different, but um, I hope also, I, I like to think it uh, because I hope it. So um, I really hope, I don't think it's South and North and East are ever gonna, be, and West and Center, well, the kind of like Center, West and North, they're more similar in, some, in terms of green movement development. Um, I don't think it's, gonna, it's never gonna be, they're never gonna be aligned. I don't even mm-hmm. hope for that, to be honest, that mm-hmm. it's like it's going to be the same thing, because that means that something went wrong, like all our differences and diversity went mm-hmm. wrong and we all together were the same. And that's something that I do not hope for. But I do believe and hope that uh, the green movement is going to be developed in the South. And I think there's some pretty signs of that. Um, of course, that's... I don't know where we're going to be in 10 years. I hope when we, we're going to be farther than what, I don't know, any uh, Western and uh, Northwestern countries now. But maybe we just, I don't know, we're just going to be there. But definitely we, I, I can see a development. I, I wouldn't understand what is the development. How I, I can see how we can do development. And the development mm-hmm. is about, I think I talked about many things um, in this uh, interview, that is collaboration, that is education, that is, uh, you need to have a change in mentality and you have to strength as a green movement ourselves, we need to be stronger. So that all the points I made as a casualty, but they're actually going into um, building something that can help southern states, and I would just talk about southern states because that's the reality I know the most, um, to develop a green movement. These, so I can I can understand the how and the fact that I, I, I think I might not, we might have understood how to do it can help us to actually do it. So that's why I'm very, um, I have loads of hope on the fact that in 10 years time, the green movement is gonna be much, much more developed than it is now in uh, mm-hmm. in southern countries um but i also know that it's going to be different it, it, it will be different um also in terms i don't know just a very easy, easy thing in terms of energy we can have a different development of our, our renewable energy rather than a, a northern country for example of course that's clear yeah. but that is already something that uh, is, a, is an easy example is an uh, very figurative example but it makes understand how differences can help and why we shouldn't get out of our diversity um but then i also think that must be a change that's the education point so i'm a bit struggling on this question because it's a very hard one and the and i want to say to everyone edward didn't prepare me on this question so <laughs> i just made it <laughs> so um i think it's a it's a it's a, an answer that has a point. The point is that it will develop, it will develop in another way as we are facing similar but different challenges. Yeah, and I think that the main thing is to also work a lot on a change of mentality that can come from through education. So that's the second thing. So you have like, of course, you have collaboration, you have the green moment that itself and its grow, but it can be done without having a change of education that it's a lot needed in southern countries um and i think that it's also must come from the state and that is the tricky part because i don't see many states changing it uh but maybe again connection if the green movement grows and goes into institutions that's something i can work on for newer generation so yeah i didn't answer to the question because it's basically impossible uh, (laughs) (laughs) i try to give (laughs) We will just close our interview with one green recommendation that you have for our readers. Okay, Uh, this is a TV series I just finished to watch. Uh, Is that right, TV series? A bit shallow, but I really liked it. Uh, as I said, I'm very busy. I'm struggling with keep up with all the things I want to read and listen to. Um, but yeah, I watched this uh, TV series a couple of months a month ago or something. A couple of months ago, uh, it's called Feel Good, um, mm-hmm. and it's really really nice. I loved it. Uh, also, I think it goes about the it's, it's answer to five, question number five, LGBTQ rights and education. I think watching it can really teach a lot on some struggles um and it's very like uh, 
it's very watchable so anyone can yeah. do and it's also a big a nice laugh uh so yeah that, that's what yeah. came to my mind well, that's your suggestion thank you for that and make a treasure Great. thank you benedetta for for the interview thank well. you so much thank you i hope bye you have a nice, nice trip bye thank you bye 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 bye